All right, so now uh, we've covered most of the, uh, the plant, plant's growth. Now let's get to the trichomes because this is actually what a lot of the harvest is all about. It's about the trichomes which contain the, the active ingredients, the cannabinoids, the resin. So as you see here, cannabis has six kinds of trichomes. Three are resinous and three are non-resinous. Now the bulbous glands are the smallest glands and they appear on the first leaves that form. Even though they're resin bearing glands, they're very small and they tend to uh, sort of diminish in their, their potency very, very quickly. So they really don't contribute much to the final product at all, but they're everywhere. They're on, like here, the very first leaves you see. This is the first leaf and, and uh, you can see it's sprinkled with two kinds of trichomes that you can see. One of them is the bulbous glands and the other one, which you can see is little round heads and the other one's the little rods uh, or little almost icicle shaped things uh, which are systolith hairs which we'll see much better in, in subsequent things. Here, here's some bulbous glands, uh, maybe a little capitate cell cell gland, gland right in the middle, that little white one. The resin glands, you don't see it first, generally, uh, by the, with the naked eye, but as you start to get into flowering, you start to really see the resin glands become prominent on, on the leaves and on the female flower of bracts. Now, the potency of leaves on a plant actually increases from the bottom to the top of the plant, and it's actually the same with the prominence of resin glands. The resin glands are more concentrated on the leaves uh, that are further up the plant and the smaller the leaf, generally the more resin glands it's going to have on it. Now, the, the resin glands tend to be concentrated at the base of the leaf and not so much toward the front. And this has important implications when you're manicuring because a lot of times you can examine your leaves and see how the, the resin glands are because uh, they'll be the same pretty much throughout the plant. And if both the front part of the leaves have a little resin, then you know you can just really shear off all those leaves while you're manicuring and can go really quickly. And the bud leaves usually have only one or three blades and they're usually very concentrated with resin glands and not too many of the bud leaves are actually uh, removed from the plant during manicuring because they're, they're very potent in themselves. And you can see these are the capitate stocked resin glands. Uh, the diesel just refers to the variety it is. Usually when I lecture, people always ask, what is that? So that's why I put that up there. But you can see these resin glands actually standing up. And capitate stock means pretty much what that implies. There's a capsule on top uh, of a, a long stalk. And when you look closely at these, uh, even at a higher magnification than this, they actually look like gazing balls you'd see on a lawn are mushrooms, uh, like uh, crystal mushrooms. This is the underside of a leaf, and you can see that there's actually a coating of resin glands. It becomes really, really quite dense. And you begin to understand uh, just how a plant can produce by dry weight 20% of its weight in basically a single uh, molecule, THC. Now, the resin protects the plant chemically and physically, All right? It isn't really a bug catcher uh, to any real effective extent, but I do see uh, gnats getting trapped on it fairly frequently. But generally, uh, bugs can negotiate around and through these resin glands. Uh, but the resin glands also do something else for the seeds, and that is, is that they filter out UV rays. And this is one reason why you see uh, the concentration of resin glands is the highest on, on the actual bracts, the little seed pods, that, uh, the pod that is holding the seeds. Uh, because it, as you probably know, uh, UV can cause mutations and uh, the last thing a, a plant wants is uh, mutations uh, of its seeds. It wants the progeny to come out nice and healthy. Now, the cystiloth tri trichomes don't have any resin, they're one of the the three kinds of uh, trichomes on the plant that don't have resin on them. But, and you see these everywhere. These are on the stems, the branches, the flowers. Uh, all of the above ground parts have these cystolith hairs and they're very prominent. And uh, they do a couple of things. One is they make it sort of unpalatable 
for animals to be eating the plant. Uh, and uh, the other is that they actually form a little boundary layer there where the actual atmosphere very close to the plant is sort of regulated by this, this sheer coating of, uh, of glands and, and system of hairs. This is on a micro level, but it helps the plant protect the plant from actually the, the harshest of what the weather is out there, whether it's really hot or whether it's really cool. Now the trichomes protect everything. And whether it's, uh, <laughs> whether it's the resinous or non-resinous plants. You hear the cystilith here is they protect physically. The resin, as I said before, screens UV light also. Now these are the capitate stocked resin glands, and this is where at least 50% of the THC in a plant is contained just in the heads of the resin glands. The stalks have no resin in them at all. They have nothing to do with the actual making of the resin per se. The resin is actually synthesized within those heads, and it goes through a maturation process where it goes from a crystal clear, the heads will look like, to then kind of a cloudy or milky look to them, to then to a yellowish and eventually an amber look. And we will talk about this in detail when we do the harvesting lecture. This is a very important way that people determine the uh, readiness for harvest and where peak potency is of their plants. But this is what you see around the flowers, these tall uh, resin glands, these long stalks. And, and the long stalks are one sign that, the, uh, that it's reaching maturity because they do extend during the growth of the plant. Now, this is times 100. This is actually from a tie stick uh, shot that I took back in the 70s. Uh, and you can see this is, these are kind of crystal clear and actually weren't quite ready for harvest, but they sure did smoke well. <laughs> 